Hey everyone, Simon here from Top Tennis Training and in this video I'm going to share with you a simple trick to help you get more power on your two-handed backhand. Now the key to more power on any stroke is racket head speed. Now we can do everything right in the preparation and during the swing, but if our racket is traveling through the contact zone slowly, we won't have the power that we want. On the flip side of that, you could have a player who has very poor technique, but they have a very fast hand through the contact point, they can get away with that and still produce a lot of power. So racket head speed is crucial in getting power. Now imagine a plane that wants to take off and it has a very short runway, a runway of only 50 meters. For that plane to take off, it needs to accelerate up to a certain speed before it's able to lift off the ground. So on the shorter runway, that plane is gonna really struggle to get to that speed to then take off. Compare that to a long runway where it has a lot of space and a lot of distance to accelerate before lifting off. Now, if we think about it in our swing, if my swing starts from just here and then I go to the contact point, I only have a couple of feet to accelerate that racket. Certain players of older generations on their two-hander would have the racket head level with the grip when they're preparing. So they're preparing like this and they come to the contact point. Now they have a very good backhand still. They, their backhand is nothing wrong with it, but it's more for guide. They're guiding the ball and redirecting the ball using the other player's pace. A player like this is Leighton Hewitt. He had a very good backhand, but it was more of a guide. So in terms of distance, if my racket is down here and I want to accelerate fully at the time of contact, my contact point is where my racket should be going the quickest through that contact zone. I only have two or three feet. To accelerate that racket head. Now if we compare this to someone like Sharapova who lifts the racket right above the, the handle, the grip of the racket in the preparation phase, now from here she has all this distance from this point to here to here to here to actually accelerate the racket and build that momentum. Now those are the two extremes. You have someone like Hewitt who has the racket level and you have someone like Sharapova who has the racket right above. Another player like this is uh, Alex Zverev. He has the racket quite high in the preparation phase on his two-hander. Now sometimes the players with the higher take back will struggle with timing because the ball comes in quicker than they expected and they simply don't have the time to do their full swing. On the other side, Hewitt will always have time for his shot because of his more compact level swing, but he'll never produce that same power. So if we look at a player like Djokovic, who has the racket somewhere in between, if the racket head being higher than the grip, he's in that position when he reaches the power position. From here now, he has enough space to accelerate, but it's not too high that he won't have time to actually hit the shot. So by simply having the racket head higher than the grip level when you're preparing for your two-hander, even if it's a tiny bit, instead of being level like so, I just lift it slightly higher, I now have a little bit more space to accelerate the racket, but also I produce this leverage in the racket and the hand. Now what exactly is leverage? If we think about leverage as being force over the oncoming ball. Now the ball that's coming towards me might have a heavy amount of topspin. It might have a heavy amount of slice. It might be traveling very quickly. So it has a certain amount of force that's coming onto my strings. In order for me to overcome that force that's already on the ball, I need to have good fundamentals, good technique. So by simply lifting the racket in the preparation phase for your two-hander, you'll have more space to accelerate that racket properly, but you also have leverage in the arm and the racket. So you'll have that force that you can use later on in the swing to overcome the force on the oncoming ball. So when you are preparing, try not to feel that your racket is level down here because now I won't have much distance 
to accelerate. So I'm preparing my backhand with the racket head being higher than the grip. And now when I reach that power position, it will not be exactly above my, my handle like so. It won't be level with my handle. It's gonna be somewhere in between, somewhere in that medium range. If I can produce this power position from here, now I have a lot of distance to accelerate and I have that leverage in the arms and the racket. Another crucial thing will of course be having my shoulder turned when I do reach that power position. So I want to feel that I've coiled up and I've really turned my right shoulder, if I'm a right hander, side onto the net and I'm waiting in that position. From here now, I can really unload and uncoil and accelerate the racket properly through the contact zone. So by having that power position, now I have space, I have distance, and I have the leverage to actually produce a powerful shot. Next time you go out there, try it on your two-hander and see if it works for you. Now what we don't want to do is have a bigger swing using the arms. I could have a bigger swing even if my racket and grip are level by doing this, by doing a circle. But I'll never have enough time to properly execute that shot under pressure when the ball's coming quick. If I have a ball that's coming in quite fast, I can still reach a position like so very quickly. And this is something that we see Djokovic doing. Even when he's being attacked, when players are hitting hard into his backhand, he's still able to reach a position similar to this, where he's creating the leverage in the racket and the arms, and he's able to produce power from this position because his arms aren't that high. He doesn't have to lift his racket and his arms like this. He just has to get into that position. It's a very compact swing, but it's making the most of that compact swing. You're able to produce the power, but still have a very compact swing with the arms. The arms don't have to go too high, and you're able to still have the distance you need to accelerate the racket properly from that back position. So achieving a position like this, when you're preparing for that two-hander, will help you greatly to increase the power and increase the distance that you have to accelerate that racket. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, click that like button, also leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also turn on the notification bell so you get our latest videos as soon as we release them. Signing off, Simon from TTT. All the best guys, see you soon.